Hey yo, what up? Be that sequential geek. Welcome to my channel. That's right. Comic Book Hall 69, part 16. Thank you for swinging by. Let's start it off, shall we? I've been checking out the Instagram site of the Brotherman co-creator, Dawood Enyobwile. Found out about this book. Um, Self-published book. We've got Derek Barnes co-scripting it with Tommy Smith. This is about the life of Dr. Tommy Smith. Victory stand. Raising my fist for justice. Haven't read it yet. The feel of this uh, material, the cover, it's almost like, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know, what do you call it? Book cover suede? It's real soft. It's nice. Uh, the ink, I don't know if it's intentional, but you can slightly feel it. Um... You know, it looks like this would be embossed, but it's not. It's cool. Um, production design here. So who are we talking about? Mr. Tommy Smith. We're talking about somebody that should have been front and center past 10 years with all this woke nonsense, but it's nonsense. It's supposed to divide us. Uh, this is the real story right here. Victory, Mexico City, 1968. Tommy Smith raises his arms in triumph as he hits the tape in the final of the 200 meters, winning the gold medal and setting a world record. Wow. 1968, people. Yeah, the writer Guy A. Sims and his brother David Sims, who later changed his name to Dawood Enyabwile, they are the co-creators of Brother Man, this uh, magazine-sized comic book that came out in 1990. How about this masked vigilante he doesn't have any powers just the power of discipline and the, the will to help his fellow man in this uh, fictional city big city this guy's like a lawyer during the day superhero at night african-american superhero i don't know if i would say african-american it's like a fictional world i think everyone is black in that world or at least in big city dawood and yabwile did the art and Gotta say, the guy's pretty down to earth. He's actually replied to some of my comments on Instagram. Uh, really nice person. I, I suggest um, dropping by, saying hi. Um, let him know you saw this book and let him know what you think of it. Yeah, some people have compared his artwork to being influenced by street art. I don't know about that. But um, it says here first printing, all rights reserved, first edition. Copyright by Tommy Smith. Derek Barnes. Illustrations. Copyright 2022 by Big City Entertainment. Yeah. So it's Big City Comics. Uh, their, their mother had passed away around issue 10. So they managed to do Brother Man issue 11. And um, there hasn't been anything since. Uh, 2013. Dawood Enyabwile. I tried to revive the, the brand for Brother Man for a minute. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. Guy is around 67 years old, I believe. Mr. Dawood Daniel Wheeler. Here's his art. There he is, Tommy Smith. 1968 Mexico City Olympics. And this goes over about his life. People standing up to oppression. This guy had a lot going on growing up. Showing him growing up on a farm, winning races. He ended up going to school out in California where he had this coach that was like this genius that mentored him and a bunch of other guys that ended up uh, breaking records, gaining gold medals. Here he is winning his first race. There's this one illustration in here I thought was interesting. Right here. Just look at the body language. You know, on the left, he's like kind of hunched over. He's got to watch his back, right? I mean, that, that says it all right there. He's able to 
be allowed in the schools, but at the same time, uh, he's got to be wary. But then on the on the right, he's got all these awards that nobody can take from him. So a little bit more content, satisfied right there. It's interesting. So I don't want to show the whole book. Uh, I haven't read the whole thing yet. Um, this is Coach College. But um, it's just a really profound story. Check it out. There he is. Dr. Tommy Smith. Mexico City, 1968, Tommy Smith and teammate John Carlos raised their fists to protest racial injustice in the United States. As the national anthem is played at the medal ceremony. Their protest led to expulsion from the games and lifelong exclusion from athletic competition, but is remembered as a moment of towering courage that inspired generations of athletes and activists to stand for change. Those fists in the air were dedicated to everyone at home. Back in the projects in Chicago, Oakland, and Detroit. We had to be seen because we were not being heard. I am slowly but surely finishing off my Vietnam Journal run. It's 16 issues. Story takes place in 1967, although printed in 1987. Around the same time. What else happened around this same time? Well, a few years later, 1971, this hair is a reprint from 1992 of the House of Secrets, number 92. That originally came out in 1971, written by Len Wein, with art by Bernie Wrightson. That is the June-July issue of House of Secrets. First appearance of Swamp Thing. Newsstand edition. Yeah. Y'all got to go stop by Mr. Anya Abuile's Instagram site. Tell him what you think of the book. Yeah, it's presently in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's move ahead with a little bit of Swamp Thing. Look at that cover. Gorgeous. Swamp Thing number four. These all came out to $4 each. I um, just want to show off this run that I just finished. It's the Ian Miller covers that I really bought them all for. But this story right here is by Doug Wheeler. Uh, this whole story arc is going to be by Doug Wheeler. Um, it lasted until issue 109. So that's what basically what I'm covering is the last story arc of Doug Wheeler. On the Swamp Thing in 1991. It's a Matt Wagner cover painting of Abigail Cable and Swamp Thing. This is also the first appearance of Alan Hallman. He was the host of The Green before Alec Holland became Swamp Thing. What am I talking about? Well, there's kind of a origin story going on with this last story arc written by Doug Wheeler. Quest for the Elementals. It is a six-part story. Um, the interior artworks by Mike Hoffman, but really what caught my eye and the reason I got these is just for the cover art. I just found them really amazing. Um, it's cover art by Ian Miller. 
we've got this um, Parliament of Trees. Uh, one of them is Yidgrasil, the um, Tree of Life. That DC version of Yidgast Yidgastril. Yidgastril. The Tree of Life from North Mythology. That first appearance in DC Comics is in Swamp Thing 89, by the way. It's a really cool uh, John Tottleman cover painting, I believe. Check out uh, issue 89. So you got all these councils of trees, different trees that appear throughout Legends. And uh, in issue 104, you have the first appearance of Kanan Cax. Kanan Cax with a C. And he's of the Parliament of Trees, or it is of the Parliament of Trees. And that first appearance is in Swamp Thing 104, February 1991. Uh, the Swamp Thing series, by the way, came out a year after Swamp Thing's first appearance. It ran from 72 to 76, that first volume of Swamp Thing, also written by Len Wein, the co-creator with art by Bernie Wrightson. The creators right there of Swamp Thing. And that ran for um, just a few years until 1976. And then 1982, you had Saga, the Swamp Thing. And the name eventually changed to just Swamp Thing. And that ran for 171 issues. In 1993, the brand changed to Vertigo, the imprint under DC Comics. So... Issue number 105, that would be part two. March 1991 and April 1991. This is the first appearance of Otehara. O Otera. That is an ancient earth elemental. Number 107. Those gorgeous Ian Miller covers. Really hard to find this purple, by the way, without any spine creases. Number 108, also really hard to find without spine creases. Swear to God. And number 109. Look at that gorgeous work right here. Yeah, let's get this up close for a minute. Look at that. It's just, uh, just, you know, I, I think Swamp Thing in general has some of the highest caliber artwork as far as covers go. Just, just covers alone. I'm not excluding the interior artwork. I just haven't read much Swamp Thing. So I haven't read much DC in general. But from what I've noticed, just these, these Swamp Thing covers alone um, throughout the volumes just been um, very eye grip grasping um, make me want to spend my money and then the last issue issue 110 has got a painting cover by john higgins it's out of august 1991 and the writer changes to nancy a collins with tom mandrake doing the interior artwork Next up, I got a bunch of newsstand comics from just a couple of sellers on eBay. Um, I feel real fortunate to find these because I'm such a newsstand geek. In my opinion, you know, I'm all about collect what you like, invest in what you know, try to get those to overlap as much as possible. My point is, is you know, you're going to buy a comic um, definitely from the 20th, first century. Buy it in newsstand. If you don't buy a newsstand, don't expect to be able to sell it or at least um, don't even expect to break even if it's a direct edition. Um, you better make sure that baby is super near mint condition, uh, in my opinion. I've got concerns about reselling my stuff, so I get picky about condition. I get picky about whether it's newsstand, newsstand or not. I get picky about the era that I buy it in versus the condition versus whether it's newsstand versus whether it's iconic or classic versus whether... Then you get into whether it's key or not. Then you even... Then you get into the regular YouTube jargon. But, um, yeah, 
um, when it, when something's from the 21st century like this, this is from 2005. Yeah, man, definitely get something like that at newsstand. Make sure it's like this, at least VF. I'm not seeing any uh, spine creases, so I'm psyched. And why did I get this one? Because they didn't have any earlier issues of Aranya. First of all, a newsstand that I found online from any seller. And um, the ones that I did find that were earlier were just too beat up, too many spine ticks. Um, trying to get something at least VF condition as close as possible in uh, a newsstand. So, and also just this cover looks iconic. You know, she's there with your major brand right there, Spider-Man. So it makes it easier to sell in that sense. Uh, makes it more identifiable. And it's also just, it's fun to see this, this cool looking character, Arana, with this um, icon that she's based off of. Once again, too bad they had to ruin her and turn her into Witchblade. And then into some weird offshoot of Spider-Woman. Or they needed somebody to be Spider-Woman. So they just took the story of her and crumpled it up and threw it over their shoulder like they normally do. Sorry, but you know, Marvel, this whole constant reboots and constantly making everybody having a kid and a son. And too many derivative uh, uh, superhero brand names and... It's just, and it's all for the bad, worst reasons, and it's just, there's no real lead up or subplots that have different threads that tie together to create some new main plot that just feels organic. No, no none of that, that's going on with Marvel for the past 10 years, 15 years at least, um, at least 10 years, in my opinion, a good 15. So um, I got this because, first of all, it was a deal. I got it for a buck. Um but it's all a bunch of orders that I combined together. And I just got it because it's iconic, and I like uh, the character Arana, the original character Arana, when she was more of like an independent street hero, uh, which didn't last very long, but um, it was interesting for the short period of time nonetheless. All right, this was kind of spendy. This was 40 bucks. That includes shipping and everything. Um, it's a newsstand copy of issue number one. There's a little bit of schmutz right here. I don't know if you can see it, like scuffing right there too. But I mean, it's the corners are sharp and I'm not feeling any spine breaks, spine creases. So uh, it's still a pretty penny though uh, that I paid for that. It's a David Aja cover and Matt Fraction and Ed Brubaker basically rebooting the Iron Fist brand uh, with this immortal Iron Fist storyline that came out in 2007. Yeah, this is a January 2007 cover date, so it probably came out, whatever, November 2006. It's the first appearance of Orson Randall. It's the hero that preceded Danny Rand. During World War I, Orson Randall was the Iron Fist. Um, because of the horrors of World War I, unfortunately, he became an opium addict. Interesting how that is this aspect of a character from a hundred years ago. Here we are a hundred years later, we've got opium epidemics. Why not have at least one mainstream hero be a synthetic opium addict? It's pretty common in this fake country and might as well have it. Show other people too, like members of the Avengers being told they can't be members anymore because they're not vaccinated show me that like show me the world outside my window that we're supposed to have with marvel i mean shit as far as fictional places go uh this world building that they were expanding upon with the city of kunlun uh, ed brubaker and matt fraction is it's just amazing it's such a great story you also have the first appearance of the crane daughters they're from the city of Kun Zi, and they are created by the Crane Mother. You also have the first appearance of Lightning Lords of Nepal. They are at odds with that uh, previous version of Iron Fist, Mr. Orson Randall. He had killed two of the Lightning Lords. Well, when I got this comic, the... This was from a, a different seller than the other newsstands I got, but that seller had thrown in 
this other comic just for fun. Um, Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon, issue number five. That's a Billy Tan cover. This ran for six issues. And this happens to be the first appearance of a new villain that recently came out. This is a recent story arc from 2021. Uh, July 2021, and it's the Hero Font of the Eighth City. That's his first appearance here in this story that's written by Larry Hama. That's right, Larry Hama, ladies and gentlemen. New Avengers number one. The beginning of the end, as I always say. The end of New Marvel, the beginning of the Disney buyout. They're doing bullshit, like having Spider-Man and Wolverine join the Avengers. This was fun for what it was worth, because it was something new. Um, the, the Avengers disassembled line from Brian Michael Bendis had ended the first volume of Avengers. Uh, with issue 503, I think it was, then Avengers finale, which is like Avengers 504 unofficially. And then they rebooted the title to this new Avengers here. Um... They were starting to hint at, like, who's a scroll, which one of these people could be a scroll, and that started to happen. And then they started having another story arc uh, alluding to the history of the century, which really made no sense long term because I kept hearing about all these other different versions of the century's history. Um, so that really made no sense. Once again, all this new stuff that's happening with Marvel from around 2005, 2006 and onward that have no lasting consequences. Interesting ideas, great artwork. I mean, David Finch did the art initially and then you had Steve McNiven come in, uh, especially for that um, Century Story arc, which was amazing. But God damn, it's no substance. Lacking the substance, lots of decompressed storylines. Another thing that made no sense, here's another newsstand copy um, of issue 10 of, of New Avengers. This is the last part of the Century story arc. Um, that was from issues 8, 9, and 10. And then you had the first appearance of Ronan with issue 11. Uh, don't have that. That thing in newsstand is like anywhere from $60 to $90 uh, in like high grade. Um, I got these <laughs> because... Um, they're the beginning of the variant cover craze, the variant cover push. I wouldn't say it craze. Um, the, the variant cover hype, um, you know, it was, it was messed up, um, because it was great to buy the, the variant covers. It was fun because it made you feel like you're a part of something special. Like there was something new that was going on with the century. There was something new going on with Spider-Man and Wolverine joining the Avengers. Um, you you had these subplots that were coming together to be a story with Secret Invasion. Um, there was a, a subplot in here that went nowhere, though, uh, where St Tony Stark, at the end of, of the story, where he's with the Illuminati, they first appeared in issue seven of this new Avengers uh, run. He's telling them about what happened when they were in the Savage Land, but he excludes telling them about their encounter with S.H.I.E.L.D., and how S.H.I.E.L.D. was, I think they were mining vibranium in the Savage Land. And if I understand correctly, somebody help me out with this. Is vibranium, it's not supposed to be found in the Savage Land. I thought it was only in Wakanda. I don't know. I'm not too, I don't, I don't know yet about that. Let me, somebody give me some feedback on that. Was vibranium supposed to be found in the Savage Land? And if not, whatever happened to that story? with uh tony stark not telling anyone that they that they encountered shield mining vibranium from the savage land what what happened to that nothing happened with that because that's how marvel runs things uh so like i don't want to cut down new avengers but it's just where all this went to what all this led to the letdown that's what that's what irks me the stories themselves just want to read something, buy it used, buy the trade paperback used, do not buy this stuff new because it'll be like real interesting and the art will be fun and the concepts of seeing Spider-Man and Wolverine joining this new team of the Avengers, all that's fun and you're learning about somebody new, but then it's drawn out, it's decompressed and where does it lead? Nowhere. It leads to nothing. Same thing with like uh, Hawkeye becoming Ronan. 
or it was um echo right uh for a minute that that led nowhere so echo had the ronin suit so didn't lead to anything never she never used it again um it was just something to to bait and switch to tease people of some new character ronin even had an alternate cover uh when they had all these variant covers for the first issue of new avengers or like the first six or seven issues of New Avengers, they had a variant cover, the special variant cover, and one of them was Ronin. I think it was issue four, the Jim Chung cover. Okay, really cool looking cover, real cool image. Who's this mystery person, Ronin? Led to nothing. You know, I am going off, and I should, because it's like, God, too much praise with Marvel. And that's why I'm pissed, because this was the end. This was the last time I was into something, really, at, at Marvel, and it just... Man, it's such a cool look, cool story, cool ideas. It went nowhere. So, um, yeah, this is the 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 um the beginning of the end. But at the same time, uh, the reason that they did the the new Avengers was because they took a lot of the stuff that stuck, so to speak, with the Ultimates, with um, Straczynski Spider Man, with um, House of M. And then they, you know, took a few years with that. And then they said, okay, this is the stuff that, that that's bringing back the old school collectors. This is the stuff that's working. Uh, this is the stuff that people are willing to put up with. Okay, boom. Let's reboot everything and, put, and work with that for a minute uh, while they push their Disney buyout. Cross-brand identity recognition campaigns, having Spider-Man and Wolverine join the new Avengers, which is really all this type of stuff was. Annihilation was to put all the brands and to show all those characters under the same Marvel brand name. That was a successful example. That was how the new Avengers story should have been run, was how Annihilation was accomplished. Same thing with, uh, with Secret Invasion. Um, yeah, Annihilation uh, was a really overlooked gem. Um, Strange Brain Parts, as a matter of fact, just did a story about Annihilation. Just did a little uh, mini documentary about it, FYI. But yeah, great ideas. Uh, one of them was this one shot with uh, New Avengers. And this is probably the last time I bought a comic over at Marvel. I really enjoyed. And this was just a one shot story. This is one of my favorite covers. It's like a Gustav Klimt esque type of design. By Alex Maleev. Really gorgeous rendition of the Scarlet Witch. Cover date January 2007. Hawkeye is looking for Scarlet Witch. Has an encounter with her while he's in Europe. That very uh, just reminds me of one of those moments, those times traveling throughout Europe where you are just minding your own business. And you have this, how do I put it? This uh, 24 hour love affair, so to speak. This romantic encounter with somebody that you have no idea it was gonna happen and you had no idea it was gonna start and, and end so suddenly, right? Because you're just in town visiting and that person was just doing their daily stuff, running their errands. And you just had this moment that that worked out and it was more than just, an, I don't know how to, how to say it to the end of the day. It's just two ships passing in the night. Right. Um, that's what the story reminded me of. That's what, that's where it touched home with in a sense. And uh, I just like Maleev's artwork and um, just the gist of the story. So the last Marvel comic I enjoyed buying Beautiful 9.8 New Avengers. I got it for $120. And leave your feedback below. I am definitely open for criticism on my spending habits. So y'all gots to hit me up what you think about that 9.8 purchase. I did the 9.8 for the fun of it. I, I don't look at this so much of as an investment, so much as it's just it's just a beautiful comic to buy and 
how to explain it. I just figured, you know, I happened upon the 9.8 in the newsstand. I thought, why not? I, I've been looking for this baby and VF or better uh, as a newsstand. Couldn't find it anywhere as a newsstand for years. And seeing this as a 9.8 suddenly, uh, we just recently decided to get it. Hope you all dig it. One of my favorite covers there. You know, that Mark Georgievich, Georgievich as well. This is by Yelena Georgievich, otherwise known as, quote, his smoking hot wife, unquote. That's right. Web of Spider-Man, number eight. Newsstand, high-grade copy. Got that for nine bucks. Yeah, pretty sweet. Stick that artwork. That was a really unique painting. And a newsstand. Definitely overpriced for me, I know. But something about it. I usually just don't get something just for the heck of it. Um, especially if it's like nine bucks. Um, usually, you know, sure if you like it, just if just because if you like something doesn't mean you should spend a lot of money on it. Like I did with that 9.8 uh, New Avengers. What is that? Issue number... It's issue number 26. This baby was issue number 26. Yeah, I decided to have fun this time. I know I've been saying this for a while, but there is definitely a change coming with my collecting. So I gathered my rosebuds whilst I may. Yeah, Kurjevich cover. Go ahead in time a little bit. 2015. Why did I get this? It's an Alex Ross painting and it's got a bunch of different Alex Ross images for each month of the 2015 calendar year. And I got it too just because of the condition. A lot of these things are thrown away. Um, you know, I've mentioned before like getting posters. Finding a poster that's intact, isn't beat up. Look at that. Hasn't been used, right? No thumbtacks. Markings right there for show. All right. It's got my Machine Man right there image. Sure, you could say it's got Miles, but I'm um, not too crazy about most of the icons from this era. Yeah, I can't say I'm too crazy about 2015, but as a calendar, as an Alex Ross brand, um, unused. Eh, why not? Three bucks disposable stuff like calendar and posters if you're picky about the condition got this just for fun super mutant magic academy free comic book day got it for three bucks it's from drawn and quarterly why did i get it just for fun um uh, i don't normally get stuff just for fun like i've been showing um but i usually get really picky i'm usually trying to figure out whether it's you know got some long-term value and if it doesn't then don't spend a lot of money on it if it's just something to collect this was just for fun. I might end up giving this away. I might keep it. I don't know. I like the the artwork. Just this whole type of composition with that, that deep red, that fox, and then that deeper blue that sky. Um, kind of that Asian motif going on. I don't know. Super Mutant Magic Academy. The name sounds a little cliche, especially these days, but... Um, style and the composition of it the combination of all that including the name just worked for me drawn and quarterly and to wrap it up that's right this is going to be a quick haul desert storm journal number one that is the only b cover that these don lomax comics have had uh desert storm Desert Storm Journal number one has an image of Saddam Hussein right here. Or you can get the uh, Schwarzkopf. I have not found Schwarzkopf out in the wild. So I um, found one, gave it away, thought it was common. Haven't seen any, uh, not in like VF uh, that often. You, you can still find them. Um, it's not that difficult online. But um, 
Yeah, I got a couple copies of these uh, to match my two copies of the Saddam Hussein. Desert Storm ran for nine issues. I got a full run of that. I just uh, was looking for the Schwarzkopf cover. So it's the only B cover of these uh, Dom Omax comics. And then out of 2016, this really cool Garth Ennis book, War Stories, interior art by Thomas Ira. That cover is by Matt Martin. The reason I got this actually is nostalgia's sake. This was a total of $11, including shipping, actually. So a little pricey for nostalgia's sake, but I did it anyway. Uh, my dad was into history, and when he would make his models, anything like a chariot from, you know, 800 BC would be involved in something or some plane from World War II. And the nose art, he would actually have like some of these little booklets that would have like images of different types of um, nose art that people would put on their on their bombers, their fighter planes. So when I saw this, it reminded me of, of checking out those types of artwork with them, and comparing them, talking about them stuff. So um, that's why I got this. And I also like war comics. I like most historical fiction in general, um, as long as the artwork is relative quality like the don't don lomax stuff anyway uh great works of historical fiction that um, i recommend y'all check out uh, don lomax and garth ennis all right i know i said i was about finished but psych check it out what do we got here we got a package Try to keep that name covered. Package from India. Vivek Goel. G-O-E-L. That's his name. He's the guy that runs. Um, Holy cow entertainment. I had bought uh, these, these two comics last year. And I gave them away. But, you know, I had bought doubles of them. And they only sent me single copies. So I blew it off and I thought, ah, eh, you know, I should follow up with them. And I forwarded my receipt and everything. And I was like, yeah, you know, you guys only gave me a single copy. And I'd like to make an order from you guys again. This stuff looks interesting and I love the artwork. Makesh Singh. He's done some artwork, like for Agents of Atlas, those covers. Anyway, he's, he's a pretty common name in the United States, Makesh Singh, that artist. Holy cow, entertainment. And they're, they're okay. Like, you know, um, Comic Chemistry, Neo Comics, those are a couple of YouTube channels that are out of end checking out. Um, they sample, they go through and review, review their books that they buy out of both the United States and India, but I'm learning about the market a little bit here and there from watching their channels. Gotham Comics is a brand name that will reprint American comics, both American and um, both Marvel and DC in India. All right. So books. Seven hundred and sixty rupees. That's his signature, Mr. Gold. Vivek Goel. Um, international shipment. Got to show your ID. There you are, man. What up, Vivek? Seen some uh, interviews of him. Seems like a pretty nice guy. Kind of like that, you know, Casada hucksterism. So definitely take this, what this guy says with a grain of salt. But he was pretty real in the interview that I saw. He was talking about how difficult it is to have a long-lasting career in comics. A lot of these smaller companies out of India will go under. So a lot of creators have to reinvent their career often. It's draining to stay in that industry, he said. So I got a couple comics from Holy Cow. He said he threw in something extra because they didn't fulfill my order completely last time. So. 
Whoa. Right, showcase. I think that's a... Is it an anthology? Showcase was one of the comics. Yeah, this was the other one. With that amazing Mukesh Singh artwork. Ravanayan? I don't know, but I know that. Uh, this is the last part of that series. The comic series ended. So we got ourselves the last part of Rava Dayan. Let's take a look at that Mukesh Singh artwork here real close. Try to be very careful of it. The paper stock is nice. Uh, it doesn't feel delicate. Yeah, um, high caliber artwork. Whoa. Pretty nice. Threw in this. Actually, let me show. Oh, wow, look at this. The Skull Rosary. Beautiful artwork. Just stunning. Uh, definitely eye-catching. Captivating for a minute. I mean, it's just... God, it looks like there's a lot going on. It looks cool. Yeah. Uh, nice. A G H O T I Agoti Agoti. I've heard other um, people, um, other comic book call channels from India mention this title. Um, they've gave it good reviews. The blind spot. So it looks like Vivek Goal did the artwork in this one. Cool. Black and white, right on. <laughs> cool, I'm glad he threw this in. This cover right here is also by Mukesh Singh. Yeah, I bought these two just on the, the cover artwork alone. Nice. I am psyched I got these in. I gave these two babies away and got them back. I don't, I've been checking out Holy Cow's website. Doesn't look like there's been all that much stuff that they've been producing new lately. Uh, hopefully things will get better now that the pandemic is supposedly subsiding. I don't know. Checked in, what? So right on, I'm psyched that I got this to read. Uh, these two, I'm just gonna keep as just some really nice Cover by pieces of artwork from Mukesh Singh. Uh, thanks a lot, y'all, for checking out my comic book haul. Um, this, the last Sunday evening of November 2022, comic book haul 16 of my mega haul, comic books haul 6 to 9. Thank you so much for visiting. Please swing by again. Y'all take care. Peace.